Hey there, Jeff Manchester, Manchester Music, welcome. Today, I wanna to focus on a tool called Spectre by Waves Factory. This is a sonic enhancement tool that shares a lot of DNA with a parametric equalizer. And that's one of the things that kind of intrigued me about it was it was a new approach to implementing saturation and enhancement across a mix or master that I hadn't really seen before. Now this tool has been out for a couple of years, but Waves Factory as a company has been putting out very interesting, clever tools that offer a bit of a spin or a different take on some of the more common things that we do in a mix or master or even at a sound design level like transient shaping or uh, clearing up masking issues in a mix. They have a lot of tools that are really, I think, intriguing and intuitive that give you a new alternative way to tackle common mix problems. And this one came up and I thought this is definitely interesting. And of course, I cannot stop playing with saturation, uh, distortion, excitation plugins. And so I had to get my hands on this and do a bit of a walkthrough and a review. So let's walk through how this plugin works and how you can use it on your next project. But be sure to stick around to the end where I'll deliver some kind of honest thoughts and feedback about my experience with this tool perhaps what could make it better, what's awesome about it, you know, areas for improvement, that sort of thing. All right, let's jump in. Okay, so we are looking at Logic and we have Spectre, this is the tool. I have some loops and other cool things to show off, I think some use cases for Spectre. I wanna first start by explaining what we're seeing here in the GUI. Now, along the top we have the EQ shapes that we can we can make and we can trigger them on and off like this and then interact with them like this. Uh, two fingers scrolling up and down, I can change the shape of the filter. It's actually really smooth animation there. Uh, so for something like this, I can change the cue like that. I'm just two fingers scrolling on my trackpad, which is what I use. I don't really know the, the quick command for doing it with a keyboard, although I'm sure that there is one. So you turn them off and on like that and you have one, two, three, four, five three kind of peak and two shelves that you can use here, okay? And this is kind of how you bypass them to return them to default. Um, double clicking doesn't do it. I think you just have to kind of go like that and then it's it's back down again. I'm sure there's a quick command. I couldn't figure it out. I thought that double clicking would, would uh, return it to default, but it doesn't. It just kind of um, turns the, the band on and off itself, okay? So you can see that we have 20 to what I assume here is 20,000 Hertz. Now on the bottom of these guys is packed a lot of information, which I think is, is neatly packed here. Um, you can see where in the spectrum you are frequency wise. Uh, decibels are portrayed here, 4.36. That's all very fine. Um, this seems to be uh, right here. Return this, there we go, boom. Okay, so that's the Q, makes sense, got it, that's the Q. This is where it gets interesting. We can choose between a number of different saturation enhancement, whatever you want to call them, algorithms ranging from, uh, I think some pretty commonplace ones like tube, tape, uh, to some that I hadn't really heard of before that are all inspired by things in the real world or otherwise half rectify, rectify, um, class B. And then there's clean as well, which is here if you just want to use this as uh, some kind of EQ tool and just uh, omit saturation altogether. And then right below that, you have another set of options that uh, will give you channel support for whatever you want to do. Stereo, just left, just right, just mid. So I guess this is, um, you know, uh, correlated and you have the sides uncorrelated. So you can get really technical and specific with what you want to treat, which is kind of what Spectre is all about. It, it's about, you know, surgical precision over the uh, audio event, whether it be a track or a full master um, that you want to do. So that's, that's really interesting. We have input and output, obviously how much we're pushing into the tool. Um, of course I have this linked. So my output is uh, responding to the input so that we don't get a huge overage in level. If I unlink this, you'll see the compensation that was done when I had it linked. Um, so we went in 7.7 dB and then we were going out on the input 7.7 dB. Of course I can turn that off and have independent output controls, it's totally up to you. Double clicking returns things to default, which is nice. The mix parameter is really interesting. How about I turn this on? I'm actually gonna return all these guys to default and just 
so that we have one thing going here on this acoustic drum track. I'll show you how mix works. I'll bring this all the way down. So right now we are getting with uh, this band, which I have over here, which is kind of strange because I should be using this one. But anyway, it's this one. As I click this node, we can see I'm on the middle um, peak band. I have this with, with a warm um, algorithm and I'm applying it only to the mid. Let's go for stereo just to be uh, more dramatic. Now this mix slider is cool. Its default position, if I double click and leave it here, is at 100% wet. But if I bring it back over here, I'm going back to the dry signal. And if I go all the way past midnight, I believe we're only going to hear the saturated signal. So let's just kind of go through that, that boost. Bring it in. So there it is, fully blended, wet and dry. And that's just my boost with saturation and that is it. Double clicking returns it to default. So what we're essentially doing is we're adding a, I guess this would be seven decibel EQ boost at 61 cycles, but we're adding to the difference, some saturation to the tune of uh, this warm algorithm here. And we have a couple different things that we can use down here to tweak and customize our plugin even further. So we have this de-emphasis enabled and disabled. And as I understand it, this is going to um, remove the EQ boost, the, the, the loudness difference of the EQ boost and just kind of leave you with just the saturation that you are uh, adding at this, uh, at this level. So it's almost like if we were going all the way kind of over here and then adding that back into the signal with no EQ boost. We also have a couple different modes, subtle, medium, and aggressive. And again, this is all about fine tuning the amount of saturation. So let's have a listen to subtle, medium, and aggressive as we cycle through here. Here's medium. And subtle. Once more, aggressive. Subtle and medium. So we have a number of presets over here that we can choose from. You can save your own. You can go with some of the ones that Waze Factory built in, which is kind of cool. Um, you can change the um, size of the UI. So this is uh, the UI at its default state, which I find to be quite small uh, with my monitor. So I usually go for something around 125. Of course, you can go bigger than that. Can you drag it? Yes, you can. So that's kind of cool. Although this doesn't really change the scale down here, um, which is interesting. You would think they'd correspond so that now we were at maybe 50% or less than 50, maybe 75 or something, but I can leave it at 90 and then just scale it out here. And this UI size doesn't change, which is totally fine. Um, I'll leave it at 110. Cool. And we have a couple different quality modes. Standard, which I believe is no anti-aliasing kind of tech introduced, so no oversampling. Good is four times oversampling, and I believe best is 16 times oversampling, so you will have absolutely no um, aliasing distortion at all, which again, I think hints at this tool really being helpful for, I think, mastery engineers more than mix engineers who uh, mix engineers, I think, will forgive a little bit of, uh, of aliasing. So now that we know what everything does, um, let's sculpt our sound a little bit. This is um, an interesting thing. I have um, a, a track here. I'm just going to bypass this. So you can hear it. It's just, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a drum kit, which is pretty dry, which is why I chose it for this demo. That sounds pretty cool, but let's add a little bit of vibe to it. Um, and I'm just going to work and I might make some mistakes, but you'll just kind of see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And now that you know what everything does, I'm not going to explain what I'm doing because you kind of know how it all works now. And I'll just start to add some stuff, see what happens. Make sure to turn the plugin on.
you listen how all those different saturation algorithms affect uh, to my ears the kick differently. Some of them bring out the bottom of the kick. Some of them bring out the top. Some of them add a th kind of thumpiness. Some of them add like a, a, a wooden kind of sound. They all do something different, which is really cool. Now that I have an overall body uh, configured here, I'm adding some stuff just to the uh, the mid signal with the tape saturation algorithm. I'm adding a little bit of tube to the high end, and I'm trying to bring out the snare as much as I can here on the fly. Um, and uh, with, with a different algorithm here, what I can do now is just bring this all the way down so we have no saturation, and then bring it in to a point where I think it's actually enhancing the signal and, and giving me what I want. Let's try an aggressive mode. I like everything happening down here, but I don't think I've found the right tone for the cymbals. And perhaps I'm I, because I have this on stereo mode, I'm adding a little bit too much to everything. So let me switch this from uh, stereo to side mode. See if I get a little bit of a little bit less emphasis on the uh, the cymbals and everything. That's better. There, I like that uh, overall tone. Let me bypass this and then bring it in. Here's with no specter, no saturation or EQ boosts. And let's turn it on. That's really cool. Let's now bring another element in and go to that tracks specter. And I already have something I was working on here in the background. This is a bass track. Sounds like this, uh, without any specter on it. And here's with something I was configuring in the background. So this is our kind of before. And here's after. Here it is soloed. after. 
basses love basses and drums really love saturation i find low end heavy stuff really benefits uh, from saturation as the um harmonics that are added after the fundamental really bring out i think the liveliness of the instrument and also help it cut across on like a mobile speaker or a laptop speaker or something which if you're listening to music on a laptop i guess you can be forgiven but at least the low end comes through a little bit more with saturation added um afterwards so those are a couple of different ways that I used um, Spectre. I found the presets to be super helpful. I found one thing that was kind of unhelpful, and I'll get more to this at the very end, was the lack of overall master bypass. Um, going over here is, I mean, I guess that's kind of cool, bringing the mix all the way down, but I, I wanted one button that would just turn everything on and off. Um, so it's a small thing. But the other thing is there's not a lot of metering here. I can't really tell um, just visually what kind of helping or serving of enhancement I'm adding. I also can't really tell where in the spectrum you know, my snare is when I'm listening to an acoustic uh, drum track like this, where there's a lot of information, just so I can kind of enhance it or pull up, you know, one kind of thing to, to, to bring it up. Um, but let's go to one more use case where I find saturation is always really helpful, and that's with acoustic guitars. Um, and I'm going to turn this guy on here. This is not part of the kind of funky bass disco thing that I have earlier. Uh, this is just a guitar on its own, and this is one use case I always reliably use saturation for, and that's to open up acoustic guitar. So here's with, you know, no specter on there. So that sounds fine, but let me bring in specter. I made some moves here at, uh, you know, two, uh, 2000 Hertz and then one at, at 2.3 and above here with a shelf. That might be too piercing, and I get it. It's piercing in my ears too, and that's why the mix slider here is so helpful because we can just bring things down to about, I don't know, nine o'clock or something and get the best of both worlds. So before. After. So it just helps to kind of, it's almost like letting a wine breathe for a little while. It just kind of opens everything up and it's it's nice and kind of spacious. And, and of course, I'm being pretty, uh, you know, thick with this um, this work here. I, even though I have it on subtle mode, I'm making some pretty, pretty big boosts for this uh, source track. Let's bring out some more of the kind of um, the body here. Let's add this in. Now we have the, the kind of soul of the guitar coming through with this little boost that I made using the, uh, the solid. Let's change it to warm, see what happens. Of course, the, the nice thing is I can go turn these guys off and just work on this without losing my place. I just kind of mute them. See what happens if I were just to bring it to mid here. No, I prefer stereo personally. So let's wrap it up there. I think there's one more thing, which is that you can change um, the, the default. So we have this kind of light mode. I much prefer the dark mode over here. And that just, to me, looks a lot more slick and consistent. But um, I think that will do it for our tour of Spectre by Waves Factory. Okay, welcome back. Now, on the whole, I think that this is a really clever, fresh take on saturation. And as someone who really likes to use uh, digital parametric EQs, not so much the analog stuff, I really welcome this new way to implement uh, enhancement across a mix or a master or whatever it happens to be. As you can see, 
Spectre has really been thoughtfully created to not be a kind of bazooka, but a sniper rifle, allowing you to really carefully fine tune the amount of enhancement that you want, you know, in, in, in all kind of channel orientations. And of course, with really intense oversampling, if, you're, if your CPU can take it and all that stuff. However, there, there's a couple things that I think are kind of missing from this plugin. The main one for me is some kind of metering. Now, I don't know about you, but there's two ways to look at this. Either you can say the lack of metering, and by metering I just mean there's no kind of like um, graphics showing up where you're adding enhancement to show you like, oh, here's a little bit of kind of movement to show that you've added a, you know, a small dollop of, of saturation or like a lot, so you're getting a lot of kind of um, uh, cloudiness or something like that. Um, so that's one kind of metering that's missing, or it could just be the fact that there's no kind of spectrum in the background to show you, oh, here's where the kick is, that's where you want to boost, or that's or whatever. There's nothing like that there to help kind of guide your decision making or whatever. And when I say people could be of two minds about this, either that could be a good thing, that there's none because it forces you to use your ears and to just kind of scrub around and, and try to find where you need to kind of boost or whatever, just, you know, experiment and all that stuff. Or you could see that as a bad thing, which I kind of do. I, I kind of need some metering to, to help kind of confirm where I'm going, what I'm doing. Again, if I could know where that snare was by just looking at something poking out in the spectra, I could then, you know, add a, a boost there with uh, with the bell in, in spectre to, to kind of enhance that area or, or whatever, know where the kick is or symbols or whatever. So I think metering is unfortunately missing from this tool. Um, but I don't think it kind of, it takes this thing's GPA all the way down to the ground. I think it's still a really awesome tool, even though it doesn't have that. Um, the other thing I think is missing is, okay, there's no metering cool, but is there a way for us to just kind of, um, you know, scrub around the spectrum to hear those things? By this, I just mean some tools like uh, Neutron and others, uh, I think FabFilter will let you do this. You can hit option and then click, and then you can almost with a magnifying glass, just solo around the frequency spectrum to see where things are. So like, like I said, like, oh, uh, I'm gonna scrub till I hear the kick or whatever. And, and then you can kind of release those controls and you hear the full kind of sound uh, again. Um, it's a behavior and a kind of uh, a workflow that, that's common across a lot of plugins that I kind of thought would be here. And I read the manual. I tried a couple of things that I thought might, um, you know, turn that feature on and I didn't really get it. So um, perhaps it's there and I just don't know about it, but um, I think that's another thing that's kind of missing is the ability to scrub around in solo, depending on where you are um, in, in the track. Now you can do this, of course, you can turn off all the bands and then you can use um, a notch filter and adjust the cue on one of the bell shapes and then scrub around and kind of see where you're going. But um, I think uh, there's an easier way to do this and I've just kind of outlined it. Now, the other kind of weakness of this plugin, as far as I can see, is that there is no dedicated master bypass uh, control, at least none that I could find. You can turn the plugin off and on using whatever host digital audio workstation kind of plugin wrapper and then turn it off. But that usually adds um, a, a click or a pop or something like that. Um, and sometimes it can, it can, there can be a bit of latency between the before and after. You can uh, turn off and on the individual bands but you have to kind of like, if you want that master everything off, you either have to uh, turn that mix parameter all the way down or go, you know, off, off, off and kind of, you know, click all those things and then they, they all turn off and you can kind of listen and take stock. So I just think it's a small thing that would really help make this plugin a bit more friendly for people that are doing, um, I'd say maybe more kind of intense um, enhancement across uh, the spectrum. So maybe just not one thing, but like, there's a low shelf and there's a high shelf and there's a couple of little kind of peaks that they've added and they want all those things to go away and come back pretty quickly. Yes, you can take that mixed knob and bring it down, but a button would be much easier, I think. Now, um, that being said, I think this is, uh, what's really obvious to me about Spectre is that this is a tool, a great tool, I think, for mastering engineers because of its ability to let you really with precision, surgical precision, add enhancement, different flavors of enhancement in a very targeted way with um, you know, no aliasing at all, again, as long as your computer can kind of handle it. And I also think it's aimed at mastering engineers for the reasons that I mentioned earlier, because it doesn't have metering, there's no spectrum in the back. It's kind of designed for people, I think, who kind of know with their ears, because they're pros, oh, I, I'm gonna bring a little bit up at 300, I'm gonna bring something up at like 1.6, 
uh, kilohertz or like 5,000 cycles or whatever. They don't need to see anything. It's all there and they just kind of go and, and add it. So I think this is a, a kind of pro tool. I think a lot of people that are using it as uh, beginning mixers or master engineers will still find value in it. But I think where this thing really shines and where I think I'll be using it more um, than something like Decapitator or Saturn um, is in the mastering domain. And I think for that reason, it kind of sets it apart uh, because there's not really a lot of um, mastering focused excitation um, tools. They're a little blunt, a little heavy, or if you want to really target them, there's a lot of steps you have to take to kind of narrow bands and, and pinch things in with the crossover points and then turn things up. This is just one, bring it up, you're done, you're good to go. So on the whole, super positive experience with Spectre. Thanks for sticking around till the end. Uh, to the, the part where I give you my thoughts and everything. If there's anything else you want me to review or talk about or try on the channel, please let me know in the comments. I'm at vodcastpodcaster at gmail.com. Um, I'm on Twitter. It's at Jeff Manch. I read everything. I respond to everything um, with a like or with a comment. You know, just, just let me know. And um, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Take care.